Um, and if, you know, if nobody asks anything, then I will torture, but the, no, it's, it's actually pretty fun and pretty understandable too, I think, this uh, controversy, but I'll, I'll wait on that. Who's got some questions? And remember, it can be about anything. Ish. So I think that it's good to keep pointing back to eternal, 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 because it is, yeah. it is the deep end of the pool when we're, we're talking about the Trinity. It's, uh, you know, yeah. many years ago somebody said, it's, it's impossible to unscrew the inscrutable. <laughs> and uh, and there's a, there is some, something tremendously inscrutable here. Mm -hmm. the, you know, as uh, Timothy says, you know, great indeed, it, we confess, is this mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. And this is, is mysterious. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. The Trinity is important. The understanding of the eternality yeah. of, of Christ is important. Yeah. I, it's like the foundation, you know, some of the things about the nature of God are like the foundations of a house in your system of theology. You have guests over and kids over for the holiday. You're not going to take them down to the foundation. You know, it's not essential in that sense. I don't have to torture you with that. But if there's no foundation to the house, I don't know much about houses. But I would assume that it would be more susceptible to quicksand. Am I right about that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's something could be necessary. And we're not talking about whether, you know, oh, if I don't get that, I'm not a Christian. No, no, no. Different kind of necessity here. Um, holds up the house kind of necessity. So there's a there's an increasing trend in different sci-fi shows over the past uh, decade and even over the past few years uh, about the concept of, uh, of different universes and multiverse stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what would be the dangers of a modern person interpreting uh, but God and of the Father before all worlds. I would, have never, I would have thought of that if you didn't bring that up. <laughs> well, I would just say, um, without knowing this for sure and getting into the mind of the people at Nicaea, there's no way they were thinking <laughs> of the latest Marvel movie uh, in which Loki does whatever it is he does. Um, or anything like it. So no, I don't. I think all world is just an expression, um, a superlative expression. Like whatever world you're thinking of, yes, yeah, before that world too. <laughs> yeah, it's eternal. Exactly. Yeah. Surely there's another question. Nefdana will. Yeah. Uh, so. Would you mind doing a quick rundown on Palamism? What is it? Oh, from Gregory Pal what, that Wait, what is it? Palamism, uh, like in Eastern Orthodox. I'll do that. I'll do that uh, next time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, are these from people? <laughs> well, I was I, just wondering. I'm, you look I'm a. I'm a person. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you're in one of those worlds we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, but but next, bring that up again next time. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real quickly, I'll do a quick version of this. The whole reason, another reason why this matters, I brought up Hodge and Warfield. Yeah, um, their solution to talking like this, and other reform people that would follow them, would say. I asked the question in week two, why, why was the Son sent? And if you say, um, because, because sons don't send fathers, fathers send sons. It just begs the next question, why? Is it in the nature of the Trinity, or are these just names? You don't want to say that. But, but consider that if, there, if the relations of origin that we're talking about in eternal generation and the procession of the Spirit, if those aren't real, if those aren't real distinctions, we've got a problem. Because then the Father sent the Son for no reason and named him the Son, or they were named in mutual agreement, or whatever you want to say. 
where they were named after by what they did in the economy or something like that, which is just a lower floor level of saying the same thing. Now, one reformed solution to that is, no, they're named that what they are, and he sent the Son and sent the Spirit in the way he did because of what's called the Pactum Salutis. Uh, it's another name for the covenant of redemption, that, that sort of the seed of the whole covenant theology. So the Son agreed to do what he did in redemption. Well, that's true. He freely did do. Now, this is a theological position called voluntarism, and we'll talk about that. And a lot of Calvinists can fall into it. Is it looks like you're exalting the sovereignty of God, the freedom of God to, to be whatever he wants. If I say it like that, God can be what can God be whatever he wants? Yeah, sure, sounds good. Can he be other than what he is? No, so, so what I would say to unite, you know, Thomas and the Princetonians all and Calvin and get them all together, say um, divine freedom and divine fittingness are not foes, they're friends. It's both. Christ willingly came, and he is essentially the Son eternally. So this is not an either-or thing. Um, so you could ask, why did he freely? You know, so it, it just keeps backing up. So it does create a problem in your theology if you say that um, he just freely did it. Well, we agree with that, but it doesn't really answer the question. Okay, so that's my, uh, my spiel on that. But uh, remember... Remember that one for next time. Do you have one last thing real quick? Yeah, uh, it needs to be the last one. Uh, what is it they're saying by using the phrase very God of very God? I think they're pushing back against various errors, but to say of, um, very is truly, it's just sort of a Latin thing, so true God, of, and the of is again focusing, it's another dimension of eternal generation that he's of the Father, that he's God of God, light of light. Hey. So one's poetic or image, and the other is more literal. Essence. Yeah. yeah. A, uh, not only a direct equivocation, but an equaling to push against stuff like Arianism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushing against, you know, more than one thing at once. I saw a, a, a half hand, or was that just me? Yeah. 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 So, apologize for question for you. So you were talking about... Um, Mormons and, and um, Muslims not agreeing with you know the relationship between the Father and the Son, yeah. just for geographical location wise to better prepare. What is the Mormon view, and what did, what is their stance? I guess. Yeah. So they wouldn't say like the Muslim, he can't have a son, because in their view, all gods have many children in the same way that we have children that um he was once as us and we will become like him this doctrine of eternal progression and all that stuff and so when you hear people talking about the muslim idea that you can populate worlds and all these different things they it's because they teach that and some of their entry-level people the people that come to the door may not know that but they do even talk about the idea of celestial sex and uh, populating planets, and they'll use that as reasons why. Mormons, or Mormons? Mormons sorry, yeah. Mormons, yeah. Um, so it's it gets pretty thick there. Yeah. And that's a product of not having a clear understanding or a clear foundation of the Trinity. Yeah, or even the essence of God. The very idea that you can talk about God changing. Or even being a local god. Well, Elohim is just the god with which we do business in this locale. But there's always been this infinite progression of gods, which is really a regression. It's completely illogical in that sense, but it's it's not even monotheism in any sense. They're polytheists. Yeah, like radically polytheists. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks. Great question.